By 1900, the railroads had grown to challenge the relevance of a canal designed for mule teams and tow ropes. The waterway had fallen into serious disrepair, and New York State made the expensive decision to enlarge and upgrade the Erie one last time. Work began in 1905 on a canal that could handle vessels like this one, measuring over 200 feet in length. The work went on for 13 years and was completed just in time for an important assignment. Think about it for a minute. In 1918, what else was going on in the United States? We were in the midst of the First World War. Um, the canal had just been completed. In fact, they rushed through completion at a time when the federal government takes possession from the state of the canal system. Um, the federal government took possession of all of the transportation systems in the country at the time to help support the war effort to make sure that material could reach from the inland to the seaboard and then to Europe. So in 1918 they finished the canal and it's taken over by the federal government. New vessels were needed for the new barge canal, but steel was needed for the war in 1918 so other materials were used instead. Wood, of course, but then one day in August of 1918, this article appeared in the Tonawanda Evening News. They were going to launch a fleet of concrete barges on the Erie Canal. If it seems odd that anyone would build a boat out of concrete, then remember that it once seemed silly to build boats out of steel, too. And if you're going to use concrete for the hull of a ship, a canal, where there are no waves to speak of, and where the water is 12 feet deep, and the shore is always no more than about 30 feet away in case your boat sinks, is the ideal place to use one. The remains of several of these vessels can be seen in the eastern section of the canal today. Concrete barges weren't very successful. They drew 4 feet of water when empty, compared to the 18 to 22 inches for steel or wooden barges of the same size. The concrete hulls were four inches thick and heavily reinforced with steel, but they were easily holed and sunk when they hit a solid object with even moderate force. Wood and steel were far more practical materials for canal service. None of the 21 concrete barges had a useful life of much more than five years. Some sank and were broken up to clear the channel for other traffic. Those that didn't sink were positioned as erosion control structures alongside the approaches to locks on the now canalized Mohawk River. <laughs> 